got an excellent example of a quantitative dissertation proposal and we're going to go through from the discipline of accounting and finance. We're going to look at some of the negatives and some of the positives. Overall, it's a good attempt at the proposal and it certainly would have passed. So let's get down to business and go through this on the laptop so you can see it as well. So looking at the proposals we go through here, again, I just want to reiterate what we'll be looking at, what the basic structure is for yourselves that you will be getting from your department. Remember to check with them. You need to know the specifics of what they want in the actual outline. So here we go through, we've got the title. We've also then, it's just a brief statement of the key themes your context and background. This is a quite large section, which is gonna go over some of the literature and thinking about the justification and reasoning and the context behind the research. A major part of your proposal is gonna be your theoretical basis and overview and a review of the literature. Again, this kind of underpins the reasoning and the rationale about why you are gonna research this particular area. So really important to get right. Then you're also gonna have a methodology section. So here you're gonna talk about the design, about the data that you're gonna get, how you're gonna gather it, and how you're gonna analyze this data on what your strategy might be. And then you're also gonna have a, an outline or a project template of how this is gonna go on a number of months, because it's a lengthy piece of work that you're gonna be undertaking. So we get down to the title, and that is, does M&A add value to shareholder wealth? A short and snappy title there. M and A means merger and acquisitions. And what do we think of this title? Well, it tells us what the area is in. It tells us what it's setting out to actually do, what it's trying to action and find out. And there's a relationship there between merger and acquisitions, adding value to shareholder wealth. So maybe we could add something more specific to this title, maybe about the data set or the group that you might be looking at, which kind of stock, which values are you getting it from, which, uh, which stocks and shares periods are you looking at, what is the, the location, which, which stock market you're going to obtain it from, or what type of companies. So more specificity, I think, in the overall proposal title would have helped that, I think. So we're going to go and have a look at the introduction next. So rolling through here. The introduction is, is short and sweet, shall we say? There's, there's not much in there. It gives a very kind of basic overview. It's actually more like an introduction to an assignment where you give the outline about what is to come, in this case, in the proposal. So it really lacks a fuller setting of the context, of the purpose, the aims, and the objectives. Remember some of the key things that we'll be wanting to see in this kind of background. Um, it's more of an overview, shall we say. I mean, it does tell us about some of the basic things which it's gonna try and accomplish, but it's, it's weak if we are thinking that it should be laying the foundations, the context, the reasoning, some research questions perhaps. So we'll be expecting more than that. Moving down then to the flow, we've got the literature review now. So we're gonna have a look at this. I think the literature review is rather good in terms of how it talks about merger and acquisitions in particular. I think what's good about this is the discussion it's able to have. It's quite analytical of different bodies of literature regarding mergers and acquisition. So it's kind of relaying different um, authors, different theorists, different studies, the positioning of them, uh, the 2004 study that we have there. And as we go through, it's kind of examining it in quite an analytical way. I like this kind of conjunctive adverb here, however, so it's kind of showing, problematizing the literature, forcing gaps or showing an awareness of what people have said, but what they haven't said. So it's talking about the limitations. Here it's quite detailed. There's a good amount of literature that it's going through. You know, in this section here, if I just highlight it, several kind of authors, and this is a high level of scholarship. You know, it's using a lot of studies to demonstrate what is happening in the field. Just take that highlighted area away. As we move on to the next paragraph, it also shows, like, I think, more particularity. It's kind of looking at the US and the UK and different relationship between different companies on what the literature has been trying to suggest regarding mergers and acquisitions and the different firms. Also here, we're looking at profitability drivers and it's examining what some of the different scholars have had to say about this and the different phenomena of the different agency problems. So again, you know, a valid and justifiable sketching out of the literature. And then this next part, we're looking at the international nature of mergers and acquisitions. 
we talk about that. Again, you know, there's a good, a really healthy and accomplished array of sources, which is really positive to see. This student has obviously like fully apprehended the field, done a lot of research and a lot of preparation. So we can immediately kind of award them for that high level of scholarship. Further down then, a general comment I would say about this literature review, you know, the review of the literature is impressive. Uh, you know, they are challenging of the literature, they are fully engaging with the literature, which allows them to position and reason for their research. I think they could have improved maybe by including some specific reasons of why M&A may improve or destroy shareholders' wealth. I don't think that was fully covered in how they recapped over it. So on to the next section, we're going to look at data and methodology. So in this, this is going to be a quantitative analysis. They talk about how they're going to get the data, where that's going to come from, the sample of companies that they're going to, to use from the UK, they're also focusing on specific time periods. Here then they talk about the methodology, we're talking about in particular event studies, which is a, a traditional way of, of analysing in mergers and acquisitions. And here they give further about the analytical methods that they will be using. And they talk about the return of stock and the formula that will be using to appraise and understand the stock values from the mergers and the acquisitions. So in general here, I think the methodology of event studies is standard in this type of research, but they have adequately described it and kind of put over some of the equations and some of the statistical analysis that the research will be undergoing. However, you know, if you include non-profit firms in the sample, it wasn't clear how they were going to obtain the stock price data since non-public firms do not have publicly available uh, and traded shares. So a potential issue there that I probably want to clarify in an actual supervision meeting. So the latter part of the proposal here, we talk about some assumptions, okay, and then also there's a section on robustness about the data, uh, talking through here, how the research becomes meaningful. For the final section though of a traditional proposal, you would be expecting to see some form of timeline, some form of understanding of the actual project. Um, I think also a better kind of plan and also maybe a dealing with you know some sort of ethics and what might be happening there. I think thinking about the appraisal or judging the overall presentation, I think it's really good. I think the write-up, the way it reads, is a good flow. There's a critical element to it as we go through. And I think it's generally impressive. So I'd be really happy if I received this as a supervisor, as a potential proposal from a master's dissertation in management, accounting and finance, particularly using a, a quantitative method. Here we see a good array of references which have been used and substantiated a lot of the opinions and the critical engagement which has come across in this proposal. So in conclusion, this is a good attempt at a proposal. I wouldn't be too harsh on some of these weaknesses. One of the main things I'm looking for when I, as a supervisor, I want to see that the, that the research is based in literature. And this is very heavily based in literature. They've done a really good literature review with extensive sources to support the angles and the pathways of the dissertation. Obviously, the beginnings of it, the context could improve, but academically, that's not going to be difficult. And I would have faith that the student will be able to perform that quite easily when it comes to the actual dissertation. It's viable, it's plausible, it's feasible, it's a real goer, and this would receive a good mark, I would say in the low 70s, because of the, the extensive nature of the literature that they propose and the ability to carry this out. So that's it for this video. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. There's lots more of these for you to look at regarding proposal and what makes a good proposal and also exposing some of the weaknesses as well. Cheerio for now. Bye-bye.